at first, thank you so much for taking the time to do the interview with us. Um, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. I'm excited to play tonight's show. Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> so, yeah, we are here right before your show. Um, are you nervous now? No. Some minutes before? <laughs> no, not really. I think uh, after, what is it, two and a half years being in this band, mm -hmm. I've gotten used to it completely. So I'm not really nervous before a show. I'm I'm more so excited and anxious to go out there and play for the fans. Okay. But not nervous. Uh, that's gone away, <laughs> <Okay>. thankfully. <laughs> yes. Um, today it's your release of your album Five. Um, you gave us many introductions in the last five weeks. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> so what was the best moment for you to record? Uh, the best song, you mean, or just the moment you feel like this was the best time to record or the song, whatever you say that's the best for me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I really enjoyed the, the whole recording process, the whole the whole writing a new album, you know, writing new lyrics, new songs, all that, it, it, it's amazing. And uh, what I especially love when we enter the studio is that you have like a pre-production of the song, how, how it's gonna go. But there's some things that aren't set in stone, and sometimes in the studio they like change. And this new idea pops out that just makes the song better okay. than you would have expected. So I think those are my favorite moments in the studio. All right. And which was the most difficult song to record, and which one was the easiest one? Hmm. That's an interesting question. <laughs> Do you have a list of our album yeah. songs? <laughs> because I'm just um. too nervous to make it from my mind. <laughs> I think The Anchor and the Sail is definitely one of the hardest songs to sing. We're actually playing it live too, so I think it's the hardest Agnes song written to date. Um, and a song that was really easy for me to record, surprisingly, I did it really fast, was the cover, Take Me to Church, mm -hmm. which was actually... I didn't really know what I was going to do when I entered the studio. I, I'd heard the original, obviously, but I wasn't sure how I was going to approach it vocally. So I kind of improvised, but it just flew very well and it was, it was pretty easy. <laughs> the cool cover. Really, I like the original, but yours is a little bit better. Ah, oh, thank you so much. Um, which topics do you apply in your new songs? There's a wide range, really. It's um, it's not a concept album, and it's not you know around a, a specific theme. There's a lot of stories in there, and a lot of them are personal, like based on my or Danny's experiences, because we we two are the people that write the lyrics. Um, but then there's a lot of stories that are like third person stories, or either based off movies, books, or like a real life event. Um, so it's not, there's not one thing, like I said, one concept, mm -hmm. but I feel like all the lyrics are written in a way where the person listening to the song, if they don't know what it's about, they might be able to make their own interpretation. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. Um, the tracks on your new record uh, are consistently entitled with uh, the word the yeah. and the <laughs> nouns. Is there a special meaning behind this? Uh, no, it was something that we just kind of came up with halfway through uh, the pre prod process. Mm -hmm. And we had like four or five songs done, and we tried naming them that way, and it really worked. I think, th I think those songs were like The Moment, The Game, uh, The Resurrection, those were like the first songs we wrote. And we also noticed that it was really easy to name the songs that way because it's like you have the word the, then you just need a noun, like you said, mm -hmm. that really describes the meaning of the song. Mm -hmm. And it's way easier instead of just like looking at the lyrics and trying to find some cool words to give it a cool <laughs> title, you know, it's like, in the end it's just about the music, so. Well, I, I like it. For me it's so cool. creative because no one has done this like it yeah. before. <laughs> I've listened to many bands, but I've never seen this. <laughs> hmm. I'm, I'm sure maybe someone might have yeah, done it because it's like there's so much music, so many genres. You know, it's hard to to know if something has been done or not before. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I'm glad we went along with it as well. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, in November, you will be on a US tour with Epica again. Mm -hmm. um, are you excited? 
Yeah, definitely, because the first tour that we did last year, they only um, were able to do three shows, and then they had to fly to Europe because mm -hmm. of family emergency. Yeah. So I'm happy that they were able to reorganize the whole thing and come mm -hmm. back to the States, and they called us, you know, to uh, come on to the tour as a support as well, giving us the chance, you know, to, to do it. So mm -hmm. I'm really happy and excited for it. Especially for tomorrow, playing at their yeah. own festival. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that'll be great too. Yeah. <laughs> um, as a big fan of your voice, I saw your vocal covers. Um, is there a reason why you have chosen these songs to cover it? Like in general, the choices I made. Um, yes and no. <laughs> They're not like personal favorite songs of mine. Not all of them, anyways. Some of them were songs that. I might have just uh, listened to like a friend request, like a friend of mine would have been like, hey, you should try singing this, and I'm like, what's that? <laughs> like, I knew the band, but not necessarily the song, mm -hmm. you know? Um, but I think my decision whenever I did approach a vocal cover was always to to find something challenging and something that's not that wasn't necessarily in my comfort zone at that mm -hmm. time. So like when I did the Iron Maiden cover, for instance, I'd never sung an Iron Maiden song in my life up until that point, and it's like, especially when you're doing male songs, mm -hmm. they're like a bit lower in pitch compared to, to female yeah. songs, and they're a bit more aggressive. So at the time, when I was like used to singing more like fairy tale Disney-like stuff, yeah. that was a real challenge for me. And by doing that, and by doing like covers that are different, I feel like I managed to develop like my vocal style mm -hmm. and get some, you know, diversity in it. So yeah. that, that's pretty much it. <laughs> yeah. Can we expect uh, more vocal covers in the future? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I did more vocal covers since joining the band. Obviously, they're not as much as I used to in yeah. the past, but I think it's a thing that I'll always do whenever I have time off from the Agonist. Mm -hmm. So it's like when we're writing a new album, and we're touring a lot, I'm not gonna, I don't have the time, you know, no, to, to do a vocal cover, but like once we're done touring, if it's like, okay, we're not doing anything for a couple months, then yeah, I'll probably do something. Cool, and um, I really adore those covers. Thank and, you. And uh, I feel bad if I download them for listening to them in the car. Mm. So maybe, uh, what do you think about the idea of producing an album with your vocal covers? Like Wooden Temptation did some years ago? Yeah. That, that's actually a very interesting idea, and it'd be great to do something like that, um, just based on the aspect that if you find musicians to do it, you can take the song and really, really make a cover out mm -hmm. of it. Because when I was doing vocal covers, it's mostly just finding an instrumental okay. without the vocals and like re-singing over it. But like we did with Take Me to Church on the album, we like transformed the music mm -hmm. as well. So if I were to do something like a full album, I would really like focus on getting musicians and like changing the arrangements and making like f a full, full band cover for every song. Yeah, it would be cool. Yeah, it's <laughs> um, a cool idea. <laughs> we are a web scene dedicated to women in metal. What do you think about the expression female fronted metal? Mm. <laughs> it's interesting. It's... you... I understand like how it was created because mm -hmm. in the beginning there weren't that many women in metal and then as the years went by like uh, I guess a lot of girls like me when they were a younger age they got inspired by those bands and they're like okay I want to sing in metal too you know so like a lot of more bands kept popping out and like the term was created afterwards mm -hmm. and it's a good and a bad thing in my opinion it's good because it's like an obvious um, what do you call it? Tag. Mm -hmm. Female fronted. Okay, so there's a woman that sings, you yes. know? It's pretty obvious, but it's bad in the sense that a lot of people associate bands to it in a negative way, mm -hmm. which they shouldn't because, you know, some people they, they hear female fronted metal, oh, okay, so they sound like Nightwish or mm -hmm. they sound like yep. Lacuna Coil. Mm -hmm. And it's like, no, just because there's a woman singing, that doesn't determine the style of the music necessarily. Mm -hmm. So, like, as with anything, you know, it's a double-edged sword, and there's a positive and a negative to it. Yeah. So coming back to Five, your first single to be released was The Chain. And why did you decide to use this song as the first one? Mm. Actually,
actually it was a kind of last minute decision <laughs> because we had already planned on releasing Moment as a video and we'd already filmed it at that point but um, we knew that it was about like a month or so until it was due to be released so the label contacted us and they're like do you guys want to do a lyric video before like the moment um, and we're like okay sure <laughs> and we were in the van I remember driving to we had a show somewhere in Canada and we're like okay lyric video what song are we gonna release <laughs> So we knew we were doing Moment, and I think we were already almost set that we were going to do The Hunt after that, which mm -hmm. was just released. So we were like, okay, out of everything else on the album, what should we do? And I think we kind of, in the end, decided on The Chain because it's kind of in the middle in terms of music, how it's like very um, reminiscent of like the Agonist Pass style. It's like fast-paced and aggressive. And it's not necessarily a song that's like totally different. I feel like Moment and Hunt are a little more not what someone would expect. <laughs> yeah. So I think we, we went with the chain because it was more of a safe choice, more of a anyone who's a fan of the Agonist will probably like this mm -hmm. sort of thing. And speaking yeah. about the uh, video of uh, the moment, mm -hmm. so you uh, done the video in a class full of water. Yeah. So how was it for you? It was fun, <laughs> actually. It was a little scary in the beginning, like the whole idea of having just your head underwater. Um, and I admit, like, I choked a couple times, like the first times, like, water would go down my nose, and I'd be like, oh my god. And it's hard because your, your face has to be, like, all calm, and you have to pretend that you're singing or screaming, mm -hmm. but it's really uncomfortable, so there were some takes where I'm like this, like, squinting and whatever. <laughs> Um, but in the end, like, I got used to it, like, as the day went by, and I'm really happy because I knew the shots were going to look really cool, and it was definitely worth it. Yes, it's really great <laughs> video. I was looking at it, and okay, this is something really <laughs> different mm -hmm. that I've expected <laughs> from the song. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, thank you. Um, besides the Agonist, do you participate in any other projects? Not right now. I mean, I I used to do a lot of, you know, session mm -hmm. guest vocals, whatever. But since being in the Agonist, and especially the fact that we we're releasing another album now. Mm -hmm. Like, I've been in the band for two and a half years, and we've recorded two full albums in that time. So yeah. I think that shows how busy we've been. Yes. <laughs> um, but I'm definitely not opposed to, you know, in the future, maybe collaborating other musicians or you know um, as a guest vocalist on someone else's album mm -hmm. like if someone contacts me and the music is great I'll probably do it uh, cool and what do you think about having a duet with another female singer yeah I mean I'm definitely not opposed to the idea it, it's all it all comes down to you know what the band is what the music yeah. is like if I were to do a duet with another female singer I'd like it to be a singer that's very different from me. <laughs> so that way when someone's listening to the track, you know, they can tell, like, this is Vicky and this is, I don't know who, someone else, you know, <laughs> like, I wouldn't do a duet with someone that's like the same vocal mm -hmm. style as me. Yeah, true. Um, if you could choose, which band would you love to tour with? Ooh, they ask us that question all the time and it's so <laughs> hard. Um, because I think most of my favorite bands are bands that the Agonist wouldn't really go well with on a tour package mm -hmm. so I, I don't really I don't know like like I said I'm anxious to tour with Epica um, because like the three shows that we did with them I got to talking with them a little bit and they're amazing people and amazing musicians and I know it's gonna be a great tour but then like aside from that like I think personal taste I, I'd <laughs> love to tour with like a band like Opeth or Gojira or In Flames or like bands that not necessarily we would go along well with, but I'd, I'd still want to do it. <laughs>
but why wouldn't you go along with them? Because I think Epica always mm -hmm. takes bands with them who didn't fit very well, I think. <laughs> it's just my personal oh, really? I saw them last year for 13 times. Oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And they always bring bands who doesn't fit with them. Hmm. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think, I think when you're the headliner, what your opening or supporting band mm -hmm. isn't as important. I mean, like, if I want to go see Epica, I'm gonna go see Epica. It doesn't matter okay. who. <laughs> you know, like, like you said, you saw the how, how many times? Mm -hmm. Thirteen times. Thirteen times. You were never like, oh, this opening band doesn't really fit. I'm not gonna go see Epica. No, of course not. Yeah, you're going to see Epica. You know. Uh, so I mean, like, for us, if we were to tour with like a band like Opeth, like I said, which is way bigger than the Agonist. Mm -hmm. There are, um, we're not going to be playing to our fans, we're going to be playing to Opeth's fans. And I'm not sure that Opeth fans would like us. That's what I meant. Oh, okay. Whereas I feel like Epica fans are more inclined to enjoy us as a band. Like, I think the Agonist, throughout the years, no. I've seen a lot of people, you know, posting like, Epica and the Agonist, I love both bands, yes. you know. <laughs> so I think it, it, it molds well together. Mm -hmm. For me, it's uh, always cool if bands took, uh, who have a female singer, also took bands with female singer with them because mm -hmm. most of the people who listen to, for example, Epica, they will yeah. see another female singer band. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, most of the time, you and the guys come out to the merch after the shows. Um, how important is it to you to have contact to your fans? Oh, it's, it's very important. <laughs> it's um, like I say every night, I say it at the shows that um, our fans are the most important thing to us because when we're on the road uh, playing shows <laughs> we need someone to play to you know yes, we're not <laughs> we're not gonna go on stage and play to two people you know so the more fans we have the bigger the crowd we get to play mm -hmm. to and the better the, the whole experience and I understand what it's like because I used to be in that position of a person, I still do it. I still go to shows, obviously. Oh, yeah. um, maybe I'm not a, so much a fangirl anymore, <laughs> but I remember when I was 15, like I would go, I would, if it was like a favorite band of mine, I'd go like two hours early, make sure I'm in the front yes. row. I'd wait afterwards, maybe the band will come out. So I, I know what it feels like to be watching your favorite band or one of your favorite bands and really wanting for them to come out to say a word, to take a picture, you know, all that stuff. So. Being in that position and now being in a band and having people that look up to us that way, I can't, like, I feel obligated in a good way, obviously, mm -hmm. to come out after the show and say hello. Like, the only reason I wouldn't do it, let's say, is if I'm sick or if we're playing this huge festival where it's like 10,000 people, yeah. I, I can't <laughs> walk out, you know, but um, in any other scenario, I always do it. It's quite totally cool <laughs> because <laughs> not every band do this. Yeah. And I'm often have this fangirl moments where I go three hours before the mm -hmm. opens and wait there and look at the two bus and try yeah. to catch someone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, <laughs> last but not least, um, is there a question you would love to answer but nobody ever asked you? Mm, not really. <laughs> Um, not, nothing specific, but there are sometimes interviews where I, I'm a little, not disappointed, but it didn't feel right, let's say. Like your interview, for instance, you asked me some of like the obvious questions, but then you asked me some other questions where <laughs> people don't normally ask me. And that's cool because like I look forward to interviews like that, but when it's like an interview like the same, you know, formula, mm -hmm. 10 questions where it's like, how was it recording? Where did you record? Um, what songs are you going to play live? Or how did you join the band? And it's like, mm -hmm. I've answered these <laughs> questions a million times, you know, it's... Um, but when it's something like filled with questions that I don't normally get asked, I'm like, oh, that's interesting. I haven't thought of that before. So it makes it a lot more enjoyable. Yeah, I've always watched your interviews you, are, you did before mm -hmm. and then checked out, okay, this question was asked in every interview, no. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. just no. <laughs> Absolutely. And I understand how, you know, you have to ask some, like, yes. of the must questions, but don't make a full interview with yeah. just that. Because, yeah, you can watch other interviews have the same answers and, yeah, yeah you yeah. don't need another one. Exactly. <laughs>
So do you want something to have added to the video, like greetings or be creative, whatever you want? Like what? Greetings to someone, your oh. fans, whatever you want. Uh, well, tell us something important about tonight's show. <laughs> important um, <laughs> or funny or whatever <laughs> well I think it's gonna be an interesting show because the venue uh, we're at the tube in Düsseldorf and it's a very small venue this stage is really small but the thing that I love about those shows is that um, it's very intimate yeah. so I'm sure that I'm gonna be able to see everyone's face and I'm hoping that the crowd will be very into it and you know, playing like festivals and big shows, they're great, obviously, but what I love about shows like this is that, like I said, the intimacy of it. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking forward to it, and thank you, um, Magna Femina, yeah. <laughs> for the interview. <laughs> it was a pleasure to talk to you again. Thank you for taking the time before the show. Absolutely, my pleasure. <laughs>